right back into it. This in insane train sequence. Oh no, she lost her hand again. She's still going, exactly. She's still fighting. Yeah, the body here is a metaphor for her whole thing. Just beaten up, battered down, not even knowing what to live for, but every day doing her best, helping other people. Well, it really puts it all on the line. The amulet. Oh, he caught it. Don't! Oh, I thought he was going to throw it away. <laughs> some recognition and some warmth. And there's the bridge. This guy doesn't really have any problems going down with the whole train. He's given up. He's the, the opposite of Violet. Refusal to accept and move on. One-handed. So pointless. I was wondering if these other guys were going to play a role, other than just being witnesses. Here we go. <laughs> this is so amazing. This is the music, the everything. There goes Oran. There's something very Evangelion about this, too. Losing her arms for a second time. Well, that resolved pretty quickly, and now we have an epilogue. There's still a lot to do in terms of Violet herself. Is she okay? I mean, is she really okay? <laughs> Not bodily, but emotionally. <laughs> Still war going on inside Violet's heart. There's still the pain, yeah. She's throwing herself back into work. It's such a crazy mix of emotions watching Violet do her thing. Part of me is like, could she ever take a break? You know, could she just have one day, one moment to just sort of depressurize? There probably are, just because we're only getting the highlights of her life, right? We're getting the deepest moments, but she's just always in this insane emotional state. At the same time, I can't help but respect it and also understand it. Sometimes you recognize that what's best for you is throwing yourself into something painful. And sometimes in those moments, it's not even a choice. It's like a compulsion. You can't help but look, you know, you can't help but open the box even though you know, you kind of know what's inside or you know what it's going to do to you. In a way, Violet opened the gates of hell for herself. That's part of what makes her journey so beautiful and gut-wrenching at the same time, because she's just going through hell all the time and there's no clear end in sight. I know it's coming, I know it's there, but to Violet, and at this point in the story, it's kind of not visible yet. And that's the last thing that needs to happen. You know, Violet needs to cross to the other side to make the journey worth it. What does Violet have to look forward to? Yeah, that's, that needs to happen. Went to Gilbert. That's scary though. That's scary. There's a couple things she's still holding back. And he said that again before he died. That was his final order. That's fair. Read between the lines, Major. <laughs> it's just purpose. It's purpose and love and something to believe in. And she was human from the beginning. He's got a lot of guilt. Of course not. It's too big. It's way too big. You have to force yourself to do something, yeah.
And it's not that she doesn't know. You know, if she sat down and wrote it or started to write it, it would all come out because it's all there and she already knows it's there. And that's why it's so difficult. The way she's been able to process this is by seeing it through other people. That's allowed her to experience her own feelings, but that also creates a little bit of a safe buffer because it's them to see your own soul born out, your hopes and feelings and lost dreams or whatever else it may be. I think has a way of forcing a certain acceptance, but that acceptance also comes at the price of the loss of the things you're holding on to, the way you're holding on to it. And that's what's, you know, giving you identity, giving you structure in a very real way. It's you. It's been coded into your beliefs and your thoughts and feelings and expectations. And you know that tearing that away will leave you facing this void, but it needs to go. And I think that maybe a key turning point is facing that void and realizing that it's not so bad, that it just is what it is. To not know where you are, to not know what you are, to not know what you're hoping for or what you believe in at any given moment. It's a tough place to be, but I think that the real pain comes from the resisting the truth and trying to keep parts of you alive that no longer make any sense, that no longer fit the reality of the world or your life. Trying to bargain with reality or trying to control the uncontrollable, rationalizing or trying to make excuses for things that are staring you in the face. The major is gone and while it is not a tool and she has to think independently, she has to be free. She has to make her own decisions and she has to find out who she really is. And those are all really enormous tasks for her and for anybody, but she has to take that leap of faith and she's capable of doing it and she's proven that. It's just this one final push. Violet. She's not hoping for good news, is she? Oh. These two have a lot to hash out as well. Is this mom? Similar eyes. Oh no. Whoa. Wow. She the emulate. Right. She has Violet even fully accepted that yet? Like, fully? She needs to hear that. It's obvious to everyone except for her. Yeah, he loved his brother a great deal, too. In our hearts. You didn't have to phrase it that way. That's kind of dirty <laughs> for Violet. Hi. Hi. I felt really critical for Violet. It'd be great if you guys could get along. It'd be real great, given that you're both carrying exactly the same pain. Very similar pain. Live. Live freely. <laughs> That's great. I think that in the show, the orders stand for, for purpose. She's making her own. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The way Violet has grown since the events of the story began is unreal. And she's writing it. I'm so afraid to read it. I'm so afraid to hear the letter. I think we're going to get it at some point. Oh, that was a fast episode. Oh, she's smiling. Ooh, dish, dish, dish. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Whoops. Okay. I don't think you want the financial obligations of this post office. It doesn't seem like it's doing too well. Although now the amount of letters being written. Yeah, this is cute, but I gotta air his personal thoughts like this. <laughs> this is an invasion of privacy. I wish this show was 100 episodes. <laughs> it's too short. Here's the letter. Violet's 
This is how the show started too with flying letters. <laughs> so she could continue to live to honor all the gifts that he gave her and what he wanted for her. She's completed her journey. That's what she wanted to do. Wait, Hurts. I understand that that emptiness, the emptiness of that loss, but also the it's the gratitude simultaneously. <sighs> Simple but effective. And it's good that she has a clear path too. She can do a lot of good with her letter writing still. She looks totally different. Auto memory doll and I love you. I <laughs> like we got the the credits halfway through the episode. This <laughs> is right back at it. Feels totally different. Or she's returned to well not returned, she's not the same person. I don't think she's ever been that wholly enthusiastic, organically excited. Definitely a, like a million times better than the broken Violet we've been getting the last couple episodes. Oh, it's tough to watch. And it's really beautiful. And it's probably not even over for Violet. It's, she's clearly turned a corner and it, it's so great to see. I can't help but just feel so happy for her to have kind of emerged out the other side to some extent and be able to live her life and live on her own terms and live freely. And not only that, but to be so much better for it and to be of such service to the world. Like she's a, just such a force, first in the war and now just with the human heart. But I also respect the fact that it's never really gone. You know, this is not the kind of thing that you forget. I think that it stays with you on some level and you just learn how to live well despite the things you've experienced, you know, the tragedy in life. I'm watching this at a very <laughs> inopportune or opportune time, depending on how you look at it, because I recently ended a relationship with someone who was very important to me that I love very deeply. She's still alive, thankfully, so I don't have that pain, but it is hard to reconcile. You know, it's hard to reconcile the, the memories and the feelings you have, all the hopes and dreams that you carried with the other person. They kind of haunt you. For a while, it was for better or worse, my my whole identity or you know a very large part of my identity and it really has opened up like i said a sort of void where i'm facing just a total unknown of who i am and, and what i want and what it all meant i think a key turning point happened for me recently although it's you know it, it wasn't an end to the pain it, it just sort of felt like the right lesson in a way probably one of many but it was the idea that the love that i feel is something that I don't need to fight. You know, I don't need to have it be anything more than that. It just is what it is. It just lives on in my heart and the rest is separate. You know, there's a separate question of what do I do with my time and who do I want to be and what else do I want for my life? How do I reimagine things for my future in a way that make me feel good and make me feel happy to be engaged with my life and do things in a way that are me meeting my potential and hopefully doing some good in the process. Even if it's not what I initially thought, you know, even if it's not the things I initially envisioned for myself. And I'm anticipating it's going to be a long climb. It's not going to be something that I get over in a day. You know, there's not going to be a revelation that solves the pain. But I think it helps to have made the decision that that's my goal. You know, that I'm going to have faith that it will work out. You know, and I can carry on, even do well long enough for it to make some sense and for me to do the healing that I need to do. The show has been really great for me in that way because it's been a doll in itself, you know, like watching other people go through emotions and cope with the, the tragedy of loss and unrealized dreams and unmet expectations, disappointments, to kind of allow myself and I think the viewers of the show to experience that pain in, in kind of a safe place. It's very non-judgmental. I think that's part of its emotional impact is that it tells you that the emotion is very real and it's okay. Yet, there's tremendous beauty to be found in other areas of life, you know, in the, the people that are around Violet and all the good that she does for other people. And even in the pain itself, you know, even in the, the memories itself that 
it even happened for her was essential. That she met the major at all was the beginning of her, her transformation. And so it's only a loss, you know, it's only a real tragedy if it just ends with the pain and that's that's all there is to it. But it's clearly not, you know, there's so much more. It's just hard to remember that. It's hard to see that when you're in the state of despair that Viola has been in for a lot of the show and a lot of the characters are when they're writing letters. And I think a central idea tied up in a lot of this is this difficult challenge that comes from the fact that in order to heal, in order to move on, you need to accept truth. You need to start to re rethink and rewrite and replan and reflect and allow the memories and allow the pain. But it's tough to do that. It's tough to do that willingly. It is tempting to fight it and to deny because it really does feel like a death. You know, it is a loss of self. I feel that very, very distinctly. Something is gone. You know, a part of me that I, I built, that was built through experiences is, is gone forever in some key way. I mean, it'll always be a part of myself and a part of my history. And if I do it right, it will inform me to be better, not worse. Rather than being bitter about life and cynical and hateful and seeking to cast blame like we saw the Major's brother do for some time, to just be grateful, you know, grateful that it happened and grateful that I got to experience that kind of love at all. It's a gift to know it's even possible. And sometimes the best things in life are cut short and that's okay, you know. What Violet shared with the Major was beautiful and it was transformative for her and it was something that she needed. And it set her on this path where she can be like a really wonderful sweet person who does great things for the world and I really admire her her character for the ability to face that head on and to carry that bravely and boldly into continuing her life and doing things that she needs to do and doing really great with it you know being of service to the world just by her living and you know her learning about herself never mind the the good she does to other people directly through the letter writing it's a really powerful story I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it that was this short for a show but hit this level of emotional intensity episode after episode it captured a lot of human experience very poignantly very rapidly and I really wish it was longer. <laughs> Although thankfully we have the, the two movies to watch, which I'm curious, I'm curious what the, they're gonna be about because the series is wrapped up quite nicely in so many ways. <laughs>